if it's the job of the church to heal, um, why do you not think the church is dealing with this issue? I think it's uncomfortable and scary because uh, we as a church or the church in general doesn't really know how to fix it. Because, you know, sometimes like even psychiatrists, they, they try and try and try. And sometimes there's, sometimes people don't get fixed or healed. And if they can't heal, heal it, or right now that is, it would be very difficult for maybe the church to, to do something about it too. Welcome back to Fragments of Healing. Um, the job of the church is to heal. Now, we have been doing uh, discussions on points of pain in our society and how we must react to them as Christians. We have three videos out on racism. And, and how do we answer that pain of racism? We have a video out on um, shunning other people and that diminishes us. What pain that is. The pain and trauma that's happening in Artsakh, Karabakh. Um, you just also, a few weeks ago, um, saw a video on lesbian and homosexual marriage. Um, and today we'll be talking about mental illness. How do we pastorally receive the mentally ill within our community? Um, this will be the last in our series. Now, why will it be the last in the, uh, this series? Hey, I could ramble on forever using any topic and interviewing people, but it is my hope that the Armenian church picks up some of these topics and starts to discuss them seriously. Hitherto, the Armenian church has not addressed racism, homosexuality, lesbians. We haven't addressed anything of real current value. Now, I don't mean in a doctrinal way or in a theological way. I mean, Pastorally, how do we embrace everybody? How do we be Christ-like? Jesus Christ did not judge. He received people. How can we be Jesus Christ on earth? Isn't that what we are supposed to be doing to offer fragments of healing to the world around us? Do we not care? So we begin then talking about mental illness. And I have Mary with me. You will know, you will note that it's an empty screen. Her lovely voice has been disguised. Now, why is that? She'll be talking about her mental illness. She'll be talking about how she would like to be treated. She will be talking about the fact that the Armenian church really doesn't do any educationals on it. Um, she'll be talking off camera because of the stigma that is involved with mental illness. And that's this, that's what we have to erase in all of our, our churches, that stigma. Uh, we keep the mentally ill many times, be truthful. We keep them at arm's length. So much so now that Mary has a disguised voice and an empty screen. Amote, what would her family think if she found out she was doing this video? Um, stigma. So, Mary, I've talked too much already. Um, I can't see your lovely face, though. <laughs> I've talked too much already. Um, why do you think the Armenian church doesn't talk about mental illness before we get into things? Give me your take on it. Well, I have I have various theories. Um, sometimes, well, I think that there is ignorance involved, and um, 
I think it's a very difficult subject to talk about. Um, so, and because people who are mentally ill can be kind of shunned, um, you know, if they, if you talk about mental ill, if you don't talk about mental illness, it's, it, it's, it isn't relevant. So you kind of like close the door on it and it, it, it won't be there. That's maybe the, the mentality I sometimes feel. Um, also, I feel like, you know, the church is trying to survive. So they may be focusing on other things, you know, such as like fundraising, um, et cetera. So there's, I think there, there are many different, different reasons. Um, I do think there's a lot of fear um, because culturally, you know, we don't, we don't talk about mental illness. And I think we're culturally afraid of it. And we don't talk about things we don't understand. So if I may, can I, may I, uh, Mary, may I just describe a couple of mental illnesses so people understand what we're talking about? Oh, absolutely. We're not talking about a depressed person here. Yeah. We're talking about illness. Exactly. Serious things. So, but I like what you said. Ignorance. There's nothing wrong with ignorance if people want to come to the table and learn more, by the mm -hmm. word. But they can get shunned, mentally ill. If we don't talk about it, it'll go away. Shut them in a closet. Mm -hmm. It'll go away. Because I'm afraid of things I don't understand. So let's talk. I'm going to just give a layperson's approach, folks, to what are we talking about today. I'm going to name three mental illnesses and kind of run them over real quickly. Uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, for instance, it could be a person that is um, hoarding things to the point of being bad for their health. It could be an intense need for order. If all of the labels of the products in your cabinet are not exactly straight, something bad will happen and you got to change it. Um, it could be fear of germs. Wash your hands. Wash your hands again. Wash your hands again. Um, wash the clothes again and again. Irrational beliefs. Uh, step on a crack, break your mother's back. You've heard that one before. Uh, <laughs> spiritual, too. Oh, if I say the slightest thing wrong, uh, God will damn me. Whew. OCD. They are prisoners of their thought. They cannot get out. There is no cure. There's coping, there's medications, there's therapy. There is no cure. Bipolar, you've heard maybe manic depressive. This is where a person can be immensely sad, where there is absolute, this is not a bad Monday. No, there is no hope. There is an endless abyss in, in which they are cycling downward all of the time. How do you live with that? for decades and decades. And then on the flip side, it turns into mania every once in a while, where they get manic, they don't sleep for days, they become a little megalomania, they, they can be anything and do anything. Uh, they have visual hallucinations. This is their life. There are medication, there is therapy, but that is the underlying illness. And one more, schizophrenia. Uh, they will hear voices telling them what to do. And to them, they are real voices telling them what to do. The TV is talking directly to them and to nobody else. The wall socket is, um, delusionally, the wall socket is recording everything they say. Um, and there's also paranoia that goes with uh, schizophrenia also. So that's what we're talking, that's mental illness. That's what we're talking about today. So back to Mary. And I hope you're all still with us here after I've been talking too much. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to an empty screen, Mary. Um, what do you think people would say if they knew you were mentally ill? 
I I mean, <laughs> I think they could they would they would gossip, um, and so they may not say anything to me, but there there would be you know it'd be it'd be an opportunity for them to to talk about others, um, but I I feel like you know for me I feel a lot of shame and there there would be maybe a sense of amot, right? You know, they may, they may think, oh, there's something wrong with her family. So, um, you know, I, I'd be worried about what would people think of my family? Um, it would be an embarrassment. And, and you don't really talk about these things. It's, it's shameful. So you don't talk about shameful things because shameful things are amot and it's amot to talk about shameful but things. But Mary, 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 we're on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. That mental illness is chemistry mm -hmm. and not character. Uh, is an illness. Mm -hmm. It's not visible. Mm -hmm. um, people have cancer. And we talk, well, 50 years ago, you couldn't talk about cancer. But nowadays, you talk about cancer. But you still feel there's a stigma. It's amot. Uh, what will people think about your mm -hmm. family, about you? Yeah, they have a reputation to keep up. You know what I mean? <laughs> or yeah. you know. So that that kind of complicates, even doubles down. If people don't understand, if we don't have a full understanding of what mental illness is about, we could lead people to gossip, mm. lead you to feel shame because they don't understand anything, huh? Yeah, huh? So it's not a spiritual. I want to go a little bit deeper, though, Mary. I want you to tell people about your personal experience. And what I mean by that is, um, what does it do to you? How is it hurting you? Um, how does this hurt you? You gave me the gossip, Almote. Yeah. I'm digging deeper for your the gut feeling how this is really hurting you yeah i mean it feels it feels extremely lonely um and that you know it, it it's sad that i can't truly be myself or totally be myself that is with other people and be be vulnerable um it's isolating it's painful having mental illness is painful in and of itself and then add the social stigma which compounds it which compounds everything um so yeah that's you know it, it's this feeling of not being understood uh and you know it just it it, it makes me sad um you know of course i wonder why, you know, people may, may shun me, and that could be partly because of, of the, you know, misunderstanding and, and how historically, you know, the brain and the body have been, have been separated, but the brain is a physical organ, and and then just leaves me wondering with like, wait, so if it's physical, why do people, why do people, you know, do this? And, you know, and it just, it, it just makes me feel lonely and, and I can't be myself. Can't be myself. I can't be myself. And then you use the word lonely, not only is those mental illness painful, but then you got to deal with the effects of how you're treated. Yes. You're lonely. You can't be yourself. Mary, tell me, who are you? Well, so when you said compassionate, for example, I, when, when maybe having a mental illness, there may be some silver linings if you're, you know, if you're able to maybe, um, get those silver linings or understand them. And so I, I try not to judge other people 
because I know everyone suffers. That's the thing. Um, everyone suffers and maybe having mental illness helps, has helped me understand this. Like, I am not the only one and I know that, right? Um, so yeah, that's, maybe it's taught me compassion. I mean, school of hard knocks, <laughs> but you know, yeah. I would like to think that. Yeah. This is a strength. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you can be not just toward the other mental ill people, but toward anybody. Because toward anybody. Everybody's got a problem. Exactly. Yeah, they are who they are. And you have that strength. Hey, I was um, in on a workshop on mental illness, a NAMI workshop on mental uh -huh. illness. Um, and they had a couple of presenters who were, are mentally ill. They were mm -hmm. on screen, Mary. Mm -hmm. And it um, drove me to ask him, ignorant, it seemed like an ignorant question, but finally one of them answered me what I wanted to hear. Because I said, um, what is it like to be fully accepting and acknowledge and be on screen and talk about your mental illness, you personally? And uh, the young lady said, um, I'm very proud. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done it. I'm coping. Mm. I got this and I got that. And I'm very proud of myself. You know, like I won the game type. Yes. Um, can you identify with that? I know we're just getting conversational, I, but, but can you identify with that? Well, yes. I mean, I'm, um, you know, to be totally honest right now, I am like, you know, my insight, like I am so nervous, So, but like, you know, after this, I probably am going to feel proud and I'll feel like I've, um, there's maybe a little bit of empowerment. I'm hoping that I'm empowering others. That's what would make me, you know, happy. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> Impacting others. Yeah. Positively. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, the life and death of each one of us has an effect on other people. The mm. more we try to present ourselves to other people, maybe they'll change. Exactly. Impacting other people. Well, our first three videos were on racism. We didn't end racism, Mary, but <laughs> I'm hoping this video somehow gets somebody, 10% of the people to scratch their head and say, hey, I never thought about it that way. Exactly. Back to the Armenian church. Mm -hmm. Hey, so many churches, for God's sakes. You could just say church. But, you know, we're members of the Armenian church. If it's the job of the church to heal, um, why do you not think the church is dealing with this issue? Well, you know, that's a good question. So I, again, I, I do feel like there is discomfort with this subject and it can, it can, you know, bring out some fear. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, mental illness is like the untouchable subject, you, you know? <laughs> um, and, and I think it's uncomfortable and scary because uh, we as a church or the church in general, doesn't really know how to fix it because you know sometimes like even psychiatrists they they try and try and try and sometimes there's sometimes people don't get fixed or healed and if they can't heal heal it or right now that is it would be very difficult for maybe the church to to do something about it too So yeah, I, I just think it's if they don't know how to fix it, they're not gonna, you know, necessarily try. <laughs> and they'll come up with their own little theories, you know, um, and that tends to be more of a of a spiritual bent. Yeah. Well, you said something before, you can't be yourself. Yeah. There's a lonely feeling. Mm-hmm. Um and other things that you said, 
Um, so it, it's that thing of, um, it reminds me of the old quote, um, if you know who I really am, you won't like me. Mm. Do you buy into that? Well, I think, I think in the best case scenario, that would actually be true. <laughs> Um, but based on whatever behaviors I've seen, um, people tend to shun more than embrace those they are afraid to understand. Um, and, and, and I would hope um, you, um, the audience would definitely prove me wrong. That's, that's my, that, that is a hope. <laughs> but um, I'm just, you know, just ba based on my my experience. Hey, folks, and I want you to be responding to this and writing notes on this. Your response. Did you understand a little bit more? Mary, you have OCD. Yes. And depression. Can you be cured? Can you be cured? Um, there is no cure for it. Right now. People, I, I just wanted you to say that. People, please, I want to reiterate. It cannot be cured. These, the mentally ill, who are nice, nice people. They continue this battle against that which they cannot conquer. Wow. That's awesome. We should look at that. It, we should look at that as awesome. They march on. They continue on knowing their mental illness cannot, it's chemistry. It cannot be cured. And they march on being beautiful people like Mary. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah. So we're gonna end this. I'm I'm hoping that people heard you. I, I and, hope so. And we'll think a little bit because the church is one body. Don't we read that often in St. Paul? The church is one body. Yes. And it's all sorts of different people. May I may I um add a couple of things? Sure. So um you know, there was a question once asked, and that was, isn't it the job of the church to care? And my answer is, it is, um, because Jesus loved and healed people. And that's what he said earlier. Um, but no questions asked. He never asked them if they deserved his love and his healing. And um, some other, something else, I, I, a lot of times I think of is that we forget that people who are ill, it could be mental illness, physical illness. Um, a lot of times they give out of what little they have, just like the widow um, that Jesus talked about, you know, with that little coin in, in the book of Mark. And, and I want to, uh, I would like to throw that out. I think, I think that's important to remember. Everybody gives and we're all in pain. Everybody's mm -hmm. in pain. We mm -hmm. just cover it up many, many times. Mm -hmm. For the general public, it's easy to cover. Yes. But we're all in pain. There's some pain. And it, therefore, it affects how we act many times. Mm. But we all have so much. The body of Christ has so much to offer. Yes. And we have to take out of prison the people that are not being accepted and received so that the body can be active, go forward, the mm -hmm. two pennies, the richness everybody has to offer. Yes. Uh, otherwise, we can't be the effective body of Christ. The job of the church is to care. I'm just quoting you. No questions asked. Well, Mary, thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. I hope this helped in healing for you, maybe emboldened you. Yes. <laughs> so, um, we'll talk. Hey, we'll talk. Sounds like a plan. I love you, honey. Love okay. you too. Until we meet again, okay? Sounds good. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.